If you read the text below this video, you'll see another story about my childhood that's not true. It's about me being a sandbox where I discovered negative numbers for myself, but I didn't really believe in negative numbers. Because to me in that sandbox, numbers were piles of sand. For example, there's two. And negative numbers like uh, that was a hole in the sand. I called that negative one. And clearly, if I put two piles and one hole together, I could use one of the piles to fill up the hole and get a picture that looks like this and get number one. So read the, read the story in the text below this video and learn how I used piles and holes to understand uh, negative and positive numbers. And in particular, to understand that I didn't believe in subtraction. For example, as a child, if I was told five minus three, I literally thought of that as five piles and three holes. I can even draw it out in my mind's eye. And I could see that a lot of things would annihilate, leaving me with two piles. So to me, there is no such thing as subtraction. Subtraction is the addition of the opposite. The opposite of a pile is a hole. In fact, I notice that it really is the opposite because if I put a pile and a hole together, they annihilate each other and leave me nothing. All right, so with that understanding what subtraction is, that was very quick, so read the story, um, I now want to do subtraction in a 10-1 machine. So let me clean this board quickly. I'm gonna make it smudgy. It seems to be the theme of these lessons. Forgive the smudginess, but I think we can live through it. And let's do a traditional subtraction problem from grade school that uh, I'm gonna think about in my 10-1 dots and boxes machine. Here goes. Let's do an orange. Let's try something like 478. Take away, don't believe in subtraction. We need to add the opposite of 353. So let's do this. Here's a 10-1 machine. Do, 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 do. I'll just draw three boxes. I think I need ones, tens, and hundreds. Yep, because I've got four hundreds, four dots, seven tens, seven solid dots, and eight units, eight ones. There's the number 478. Now, in my sandbox, these would be piles. And what I want to add to this is a whole bunch of holes, the opposite of 353. So I need to do something here that represents basically a hole. That is, I need something that goes with a dot and annihilates it and gives me uh, nothing. So I guess I'll call that an antidot, like you know, matter and antimatter annihilate each other. Piles and holes annihilate each other. So let me draw, I'll just use the symbol of an open dot. I'll call, if that's a solid dot, is a dot, and an open dot is a dot, I'll call the open dots antidots. And put an anti, whoops, lousy handwriting, put a dot and antidot together, and they annihilate each other and give me, well, I don't know what to draw, nothing. So, in order to take away 353, what I'm really doing is adding three anti-hundreds, three, uh, five anti-tens, and three anti-units. Bingo. So there is my subtraction problem, really represented as the addition of the opposite, because that's what subtraction truly is. And what happens? I see here I've got a dot, anti-dot annihilation, dot, anti-dot annihilation, dot, anti-dot annihilation, so I'm left with one actual dot. And yes, it's true, I've done the equivalent of saying four solid dots take away three dots, leaves me one dot. But, you know, it's just really annihilation going on. Here we've got five anti-dots, which can annihilate five actual dots, do, 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 leaving me two actual dots here. And I guess the more annihilations go on, three annihilate three, leaving five. So the answer is 125. And again, it's kind of as though I just went left to right, because I like to read from left to right in everything. Uh, four take away three is one, seven take away five is two, eight take away three is five, 125. 100, two tens, five ones. Brilliant. Of course, that was too nice. You know, you know there's subtleties to this subtraction idea. So let's do another subtraction problem. And since my board is particularly smudgy, let's just change colors and see if that will help with the smudginess. Let's go with blue this time. Let's try something like 423, and let's add to that the anti-version of 254. That is 423, take away 254. All right, let's draw it. In a tell machine, this is what 423 looks. 400s and 23. And I add to that the anti-version of 254. Two anti-dots, five anti-dots, four anti-dots. All right, there's the subtraction problem in a 10 run machine, beautiful. I guess I've got some uh, dot anti-dot annihilation, I'll just do it this way, and I'm left with, what, two solid dots? Uh, dot anti-dot disappear, dot anti-dot disappear, and I'm left with three anti-dots. I guess I'll write this, anti-3, negative three. And annihilation, annihilation, and annihilation leaves me with one antidot. So I've got the answer 200 and negative 30, negative 1E.
which is absolutely mathematically fine, valid, and correct. That's a fine answer. 200 negative 30 negative 1e. If I just again, it's like I just went from left to right. 4 take away 2 is 2, 2 take away 5 is negative 3, 3 take away 4 is negative 1. Now I do confess, people will probably balk at that. What on earth does 200 negative 30 negative 1e mean? Well, we can fix this up for the rest of the world. Um, for example, I've got a solid dot here. What could I do to make these anti-dots, you know, not part of the, the, the language here? Well, I know any dot here is worth 10 dots back over here. So let me unexplode one of these dots. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Because 10 of these makes one of those. Going backwards, one of these is 10 of them. All right, so I've got 10 solid dots and three anti-dots. I've got some more annihilations going on. It leaves me with seven actual dots, but I've one less here now. So I can say the answer is actually 170 negative 1e. Still mathematically great, mathematically correct, nothing wrong with that. People probably balk at the negative one there. Well, again, I could take one of these dots and then explode it and make 10 here. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So that's one less here. And then add an extra 10 there. So what I've now got is 169. 169. 423, take away 254 is 169. I know that was a lot of work, but actually, conceptually, that makes perfect sense. And it's kind of fun, it's kind of quirky. I like quirky. And I also love the fact that I could still go from left to right, get an answer, and then sort of unexplode and fix things up for the rest of the world if they want. Now, just to be clear, obviously this is not what's taught in the traditional curriculum. What's taught in the curriculum is to suddenly go, don't read from left to right anymore, read from right to left. So let's do this in pink. So a traditional way of doing this, 254, was it? Yep. Would be, okay, start from the right, Three, three dots, take away four dots, can't do it. So this thing actually confused me as a kid when I was going through grade school, in Australia it's called primary school, that we had to say, take away one of these guys, make that one less, and make this three, not three anymore, make it 13. So, because now I can say 13 take away four is nine. If you think about what just happened there, this borrowing digits, we've actually taken one of these tens and unexploded and made an extra 10 dots in this box. So now we've got not just three dots here, but now 13 dots. So that actually makes perfect sense. That's an unexplosion. Now I'm going to say one take away five is, okay, well I would go negative four personally, but I can't if I'm doing the traditional way. So you can't do it. So take away one of these hundred dots, so only three are left now, and make this not one dot here, but eleven dots. Eleven take away five is six, three take away two is one. So what's taught in the tra traditional curriculum is go from right to left and do unexplosions as you go along so you never have to even think about negative numbers. Or if you want to think about negative numbers as you go along, great! Do it, like I do, and then unexplode at the end. It's all a matter of style, a matter of preference. I admit this is probably quick to write down, as speed as your, as your desire. But if you really want to speed, then I'd just get it a calculator, to be honest. Yeah, but I like this. I like the thinking involved in this. It's fun, it's quirky, and I get it. I actually conceptually understand and see, in a very real way, what is happening. Seeing what's happening is a key way to think like a mathematician. Okay, lots of fun, let's carry on. We've done addition, multiplication, sort of, and subtraction. The whopper of the one is division, coming next.